Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The consciousness of my partner is still here. Uh, in this process you call channeling, he stands beside the chair. That's how close he is. This is a learned trait and does not necessarily mean it's the way of channeling. This is what he has had to do. From his standpoint in three dimensions, he must leave the room, which is the brain, in order to allow the creative energy through his higher self to fill the space and deliver the message. Long ago, one of the attributes that he set as his standard would be that he would be able to remember all that was said. That he does not go into a state where he floats around. He goes into a state where he takes notes. It's the engineer that needs to remain to validate, to check, to make sure all is well. I tell you this, dear ones, because the very process that you see now is something that is common to humanity. The invitation is open, as I say yet again, for you to find this for yourself in a way that involves your intuition. That your intuition becomes then as Cryon is to him, giving you the messages you need when you need them, not in front of groups, but in front of you. To give you good guidance when you need good guidance. To let you see when you're being foolish, if you're being foolish. To let you see if you're being profound, when you're being profound. And so it is that the human being has always had this ability. And in this new emerging energy, we told you last night that all the things that are coming and are being presented to you that are new are actually part of a process of things that were always here. And in this process of things that were always here, we referred to them as a time capsule. Last night we walked you through some of that which was the time capsule of Gaia. The things that lay within the crystalline grid. That have always been there planted indeed by the very creative source that founded humanity. The ones that changed your DNA, that fused it into 23 chromosomes. Well, the information of the Pleiadians are there. But the information that they have, that they still have, that will be released over time, is about ideas, about inventions, things for humanity, and not for you personally. Instead, the time capsule that it's going to change you personally is right where you think it is. And again we talk about that mysterious thing called DNA. DNA, the double helix, the building block of life, has been revealed as a multi-dimensional tool. And some of you may believe that it contains information that would be unique to humans. If this is so, let me ask you, why was it so easy for the Pleiadians to become three of your esoteric layers of the twelve? The answer is that they have DNA also, and it looks a lot like yours. I have something else for you to ponder. Hmm. 
do they have three layers of somebody else's? And the answer is yes. And what about their parent planet that seeded them a million years ago or so? Does the parent planet have three layers that belong to somebody else? And the answer is yes. You start to hear the parents' names and you know what they are. When you start to hear about the Orion, the Arcturian, it should be meaningful to you to know that there's a system on this, this galaxy platform that you live on. A beautiful system that is ageless, as old as the galaxy itself. You got to know something, dear ones. There is something that is uniform when it comes to life in the galaxy. In the galaxy. And you are going to discover it eventually as you find life outside your own planet in your solar system. And when you do, it'll be microbial. And when you look at it, you're going to find DNA. That's when you're going to start to understand and realize that there is a sameness of evolutionary processing of life. Something that is not unique to earth, but a driving force that actually puts things in place that drives them to a certain way. A system that makes DNA. And indeed the DNA may be different. Indeed, the numbers inside, the chemistry inside may be different, but the process called DNA for the chemistry that it represents is the same. And so those who seeded you have DNA. And the ones who seeded them have DNA. Interesting it is that this sameness you will find someday in the smallest of the small in faraway places that did not come from the planet and you will start to understand and realize there is a system and it's beautiful there's a time capsule in you the three Pleiadian layers are not all that unique what they represent in you is all that they are and their parents are and the parents of their parents are. And what I am telling you this is that the time capsule within you is longer lived than your planet. <laughs> it represents those in the galaxy far, far older than you even of the human race itself. It's in you. We have told you for years that there is more here than you can imagine. And that it opens and reveals itself only as humanity allows it. And so in these few minutes we would like to metaphorize for the first time, you walking into your DNA. Over a hundred trillion pieces of DNA, all identical in your body. Science has discovered the double helix. They've analyzed it, but no one has even started to ask the big question. How do they communicate? Do they act as one? And the answer is yes. How are they put together? How can they act as one? Is there a field surrounding them? Is there a consciousness to them? All of these kinds of things in the human body you never looked at, you don't know about yet, and you will. How does DNA respond to brain consciousness. For DNA does not think. 
your brain thinks. DNA does not have synapse or logic. Your brain does. How does the DNA re respond to the neurons in your heart? For there are far more of them than there are in your brain. Does the heart think? All of these questions you'll have an answer to when you understand the system eventually. DNA is bigger than you think. The process is bigger than you think. Let me walk you into it in a way that will be meaningful to you in a story way, in a metaphor way, to allow you to process a little and think about things that I'm going to tell you that are beautiful. The energy that you are in now is the beginning of the rest of history. And over time it will reveal itself as being different than the rest of history. You will see, see things occur and not all that far away. It'll make you remember the meeting today and what my partner taught. You indeed have passed a marker that is very significant to the very galaxy you live in. And I'll say this again, that there are those you have yet to meet that know your name and what you've done here and are celebrating this moment that the only planet of free choice has become something different. It has become the planet that chose. <laughs> and right now, as you sit here, there is another planet that's cooking in the background. In less than a quarter of a rev, around the center of the galaxy, it will be ready for you to plant the seeds in it. It's a bit away. But that is the profundity of what you've done. You've gone past a potential that you might do something into an area where you did it. And this ball is rolling to the extent that you can't stop it. And dear old soul in this room, there may be seniors who will flail around and all their life still not understand what has happened, but the children know. And their children will know. And they are coming into this planet different than you did. With DNA that is different than yours. The quantum portions of it Picking up a new energy, not the old energy, with new ideas that you've not thought of. And how to build a planet which will not overpopulate itself because it's smart. That will not take its resources and expend them because it's smart. Because instead it will find new ways of doing things that you always dreamed were there. And the children of the children of the children will be you. By the way, come with me on this journey. There's a time capsule in your DNA. Let's pretend for a moment that you stand in front of a house. And the house is the metaphor of your own DNA. One double helix will represent them all. Not to get complicated, not to take you to a place where you have to be in puzzlement, but instead a journey with me. We've done things like this before, but I want you to take you, I want to take you into this house. When you open the door to the house, what you're going to see is a long hallway. And that hallway has many doors. And the metaphor is that each door is an energy of DNA that is yours. Some of the doors stand open and some are closed. And as you walk into this place, you're reminded your name is all over it. This is you. 
It is the inner sanctum of quantum biology called the double helix. And instead of mysterious chemistry that you would never begin to understand or quantum energies that you cannot even see, it's a, a hallway with doors. Putting it into 3D so you can understand what's coming. The doors that are closed are doors that you will be able to open eventually. And the fact that some of them are open already tells you a story. The DNA is already functioning a certain way because the open doors are the functioning parts. The closed doors are the ones that are not functioning yet. It also tells you that DNA, as complete as it is, is dysfunctional. <laughs> For only a few of the many doors are open in this existence, on earth, at this time. And that is going to begin to change. For it's the next years that are going to start opening those doors. And it's not going to be chemistry. It's not going to be nutrients and, and supplements. It's going to be you. Awakening into a new reality because you are free of the old one. It's going to happen intuitively as you walk out of the room. As fast as you wish and is available to you on your life's path, it will begin to show itself. You'll know by how you feel. You'll know by your energy level and your thoughts. You'll know by the, the tone of your personality. It's a hard one. Where does it center? I'll get to that. You've walked into this beautiful hallway. It's beautiful. It's new. It's always new. It's you. I want you to see this hallway is never aging because no matter what lifetime you have, you carry this with you. It doesn't get old. It's part of a, a multi-dimensional system of foreverness. It goes beyond the human body. There's consciousness in there. There's memory in there. And there are many doors. And you stand for a moment and you admire the beauty of the system. And I want to tell you what else some of you might see. The future. Because this time capsule is beginning to open. So in this journey down the hallway, let us look at the open doors first. So that you'll understand what is before you. The first open door has a label on it. And the label is chemical heredity. And when you walk into any of the rooms represented by the doors, you're going to find a storehouse of information. You won't find processes in these rooms. You're going to find information. You're not going to find logic and reasoning in these rooms. For the DNA is the storehouse, the control panel of all the other things in your body. And only a fraction of it will actually be doing anything. And the rest is storing the time capsule. And the first door is wide open because this is the one that has been used for centuries, eons, millennium. It is the process of chemical inheritance. It's your parents and you. It's what the genealogists study. It's the chemistry of how one becomes another through birth. The parts of your parents that you inherit whether it's their hair color, their eye color, their skin color. 
It's the chemistry. And it's a storehouse of a system that works that you're aware of in 3D. And it stands wide open because this is part of DNA. The chemicals that you have will be passed to your children and their children and the children of their children. This is common sense. It is known. It's one of the doors. It stands wide open. You come to the next door which is open and it's a little more esoteric. And it has a label on it that says immediate Akashic inheritance. This represents the information of your immediate past lives that you carry into this one. Not the chemistry, the Akash. And so from one lifetime to another, you carry pieces and portions of who you were. And we have explained these things before because there are very high potentials that present themselves through your life that go right into the Akashic record that represent themselves as creative passion. And creative passion is one of the things that is inherited from one lifetime to another. Difficult to explain, dear ones, but it would explain why you would come out of your mother's womb and you would have attributes that your mother and father never had. Sometimes your mom and dad would look at you and say, where did the talent go that we thought we gave them? <laughs> and they would look and find talent they never had that you do. Now where did this come from? Immediate Akashic inheritance. We have told you in the past that this comes from an organizational system called karmic grouping. You meet your group, the ones that you are meant to interface with on the planet. It's a system that is beautiful and it helps synchronicity. Even if you don't travel, you may find them. Old souls eventually are attracted to old souls. In this room, there are some. And you haven't even met each other yet. And this was a great opportunity. You wear that? Do you realize that this is why you came? Perhaps to look into the others, and greet the God in them with the must, namaste, and open a consciousness, a discussion that's karmic. They may have the answers, and you don't, you don't even know what the questions are. Immediate Akashic inheritance. This is what creates artists who become artists who become artists. It explains the child who can paint like the master when they're eight. The musician who can compose when they're five. The poet who has the words coming even in some other languages as soon as they can speak. It's almost like a continuation of a past life if the passion is great enough. In most cases, the passions are subtle. And some of you will find them once you get out of survival. But they have nothing to do with your parents and everything to do with who you used to be. They represent fears, phobias, Strengths and weaknesses. Personality types. Some of whom will find themselves in a position of fear and weakness. Where their parents are never ever in a situation of fear and weakness. Or they'll be, they'll be self-assured stepping right into where angels would never tread. <laughs> And their parents are going, who is that person? 
immediate Akashic inheritance. The door is wide open. It's part of the system, dear ones. Now we're going to do something. I'm going to tell you how many doors are open. Three. Only three. And I'm going to tell you what the third door is, and I'm going to ask you to close it because you don't need it anymore. You see, a DNA is like that. It responds to the energy that humanity has given to it. And you've come from an old system, dear ones, that needed an energy that no longer is needed. And so you're going to close a door. And then we're going to invite you to open a couple of others, and we're going to label them. You come across the third door, which is wide open, and what it says is karma. And you walk in, and there all of this information about unfulfilled energetic puzzles. Unfulfilled energetic puzzles. That's what karma is. And you come into the planet, and it lays there, and it drives you often to do things that are mysterious. Unfinished business, you know what karma is. 23 years ago, even before the first book was written, I told my partner that I would channel that humanity had to drop it. For this is an old driving system that would put you in certain places that would create the wheels of a system that you no longer need. Karma is like a lifeboat that has no tiller. Karma there is the waves that would push the lifeboat around with you in it. Pushing you to places that perhaps you should be to continue something you didn't finish before. But in a new energy, dear ones, you're in a lifeboat that has a tiller and a rudder and you're able to steer it yourself and we've told you that before, so it's time to close the door of the energy of karma. I mean, close it, lock it, and throw away the key. You don't need it. You just don't need it. Now, some of you have already done that, and I'll tell you what the attribute is that and, and how you know you've done it. Because if you've done it, <laughs> the karmic game that used to be played with you, your friends, your parents, is over and they've had a reaction to it and you know who you are and they look at you and they don't even want to think you're in their family because you won't play the game with them anymore their lifeboats are pushed and pulled by the same energies that you were you're supposed to play this karmic game with them and once you close that door it was over the drama stopped they expect things from you, and you didn't give it to them. You wouldn't go and do and be what they wanted you to. And you took the tiller and steered it away from them, and you know who you are. And you are one who has closed the door already. And there are those listening to this right now who need to close the door. If you don't close the door of karma, you're not going to be able to steer your boat. And that is a metaphor of you and your life's purpose and what you came for. Because once you can steer your own boat, my good old soul friend, you're going to steer it to peace on earth. You're going to steer it to health. I haven't told you about the doors yet you're going to open, so let's open some more. We closed one, two are open, now we're about to open closed ones. And the first one we're going to give you is the door of the body bridge. And we've told you about this before. This is a door that needs to be open between the intelligent body and the conscious body. The corporeal body that knows about who it is and what's going on and the, and the, the conscious body that only pretends to. It was even brought up earlier. 
Why do you muscle test? Have you ever thought about that? There is a missing bridge, dear ones, between your conscious awareness and the intelligence of the human body. There needs to be the beginning of a construct that puts these together so you never have to muscle test again. If something is growing in your body that's inappropriate, you'll know it instead of having to wait months going to a doctor and discovering it as a surprise. <laughs> Does it make sense to you that the corporeal body should be on another planet and you have no idea what's going on? Well, that's the way it is right now. Does that seem right to you? There is a door that is closed and has been since the Pleiadians were here. And now it is to be opened slowly. And once you metaphorically see it start to open, this body bridge will start giving you intuition about your own health. Your diets will start to change. And you know what they're going to change to? What you got used to as another lifetime that may be chemically more appropriate for you than the food you're eating. You want to lose weight? Open this door. Want to lose weight? Open this door. For the body bridge is you talking to that which is chemical. You're talking to the Akashic record. The intelligent body knows a lot more than you do. When you open this door, DNA activates itself to start knowing what's inside that you need to know. Things that only medicine will tell you, that only doctors will tell you, that only their tests will tell you, you'll know intuitively. A medical intuitive is a person with that door open. Did you know that? And this is what makes the difference, and you have seen it. That's one. Let me give you another one. Here is one that just lays there in the dark, and you don't even know it exists. And we're going to call it the door of self-balance. And I want you to open it. This one is going to allow the old soul to always return to a center no matter what happens to them. Without help, without question, whether they go into fear, they always know they'll return to the center. A centeredness where all is well. A centeredness that sees the joy of the created God. A centeredness that knows about Gaia. A centeredness that knows the peace that is available no matter what is happening around them. Something that will be automatically yours. Why do you need this? I'll tell you because many, even old souls, gyrate on both sides. And they never know where center is. And one of the frustrations that you have, and even some of you sitting in the room, is... Who am I? What am I doing? Why do I feel this way? <laughs> if you had the door open of self-centering, you're your own guru. The connection is complete, and you know where center is, and you search for it. If you're in trouble, if you're in fear, you come back to the middle. You don't stay in the hole. You don't stay in frustration. You don't stay in worry. You come right back. That's the second door. It's time to start opening the third door, which is that cautiousness that you have, which is not immediate, but that has old soul energy within it. This is the door of wisdom. If you open that door, now you have things available to you that we have talked about for two years where you can mine the Akash. And that is to say, you're going to go in and start to recognize what you have already earned through lifetimes. 
Years and years and years of walking in another body. Do you think that just went away? Years and years of wisdom. Perhaps as an indigenous on the planet, knowing how things work. You think that all just went away? It is in that room, dear one. And it's time to open the door. You become your own ancestor. Self-balance and Akashic mining together create a balanced human being. People will see God in you. They're going to wonder what you've got. Don't tell them that you open doors. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. Three doors. Now you have five open and one closed. The five is change. This hallway, dear ones, is filled with much more. It's filled with long life. When we get there, one of the doors that I want you to open just yet is beautiful. I'll identify it now. And it's called Stem Cell Blueprint. It changes the way your body rejuvenates itself. Your body rejuvenates itself at the moment making copies of cells. When this door begins to be opened, gradually it'll start making originals not copies. It'll go and get the blueprint and make a cell from it. And this will be the secret of long life. Dear human, this is coming. It will come. You've got to get through a couple of years. You've got to get used to this new energy. You've got to try out the easy doors that I gave you. <laughs> In order to learn to open some of the others. It is the beginning of an ascended human being. You've got divine DNA. We've said it before, it's like you've got a race car inside and you're driving a Ford. You know what I mean. It's all there. The time capsule is available. And this is the energy of it. This is the theme of Cryon. That you would open these doors for yourself and begin processes that you didn't think you had. You're done solving the problems of the old energy. They will solve themselves. You're going to be starting to work on those things that are new. But right now, right now, we say just breathe and take a little vacation. And wait for the crazies to get over. Wait for the year of the full moon to pass. And allow this time to take stock of the love of God in you. Look in the mirror and love to learn to love yourselves. This is the exercise. And be patient. And so it is again. I give you the same words that I had before. The toolkit remains the toolkit. And will for some time. There is no clock on how long these things will take. And humans will make the difference. How fast the old energy morphs into the new. How quickly those who are invested in the old energy give up. And understand that there is no hope to return to a less aware state. <laughs> and that is the truth of the day. Loved by God, each of you. You are known by God, all of you. Old soul, you are here for a reason. In the body you're in, in the condition it's in, in the age you are, you're going to make a difference on the planet. Some of you already have. Your existence here is noted. And so it is.